Hello there. So the semifinalist cutoff has been announced. It has been made. Those of you guys who are curious about national merit, it has all to do with the PSAT that you take in 11th grade. I'm going to leave a link to this below. If you're wondering like what's going on, Jay, or what is this about? What are the details? This write-up from Prep Scholar is actually fantastic. So they'll explain it better than I can. But long story short, PSAT's results, the cutoff has come off for the class of 2024, rising um, seniors or current seniors. And the cutoff for California was 221, which is very high. Um, not DC high at 223. Um, again, if you're worried, if you want to learn more about like what those, the, the sub scores and the numerics there mean, you could just read through this. Suffice to say that you basically want to score like a 1500 if I had to do the math there. So the PSAT is out of a 1520. They scale it down by 80 points. The SAT right now is 1600. So the PSAT is 1520. Think of it as like a slightly neutered exam. It's much, it's, it's easier. They get rid of difficulty four and five questions, uh, but they give it an 11th grade and that is used as an indicator or one of the, the, the evaluation, big evaluation items for the national merit, which is a national academic distinction slash award. Now, the announcement comes with names from every high school in California, at least according to this PDF. And I'm going to, again, link this too. Um, I ended up getting this from one of my tryhard students. Uh, he, we're on the Mission Masters Youth Investor Stocks Club, the, the Stocks Club Discord. And he posted this very, very helpful link. Thank you for that, buddy. Um, when I started reviewing this, I just... Um, Random story. I just ended up selling my high school cello, the, the one that I used to, to go on like all, all or all stay, all, all that other stuff. But um, the mom had a question about which high school um, I would send or like which high school would be recommended in Irvine. Because a lot of parents and families move to Irvine. One of the big with a big factor being the good public school system. Uh, and my immediate experience tells me, obviously, not all schools are equal, but I didn't know exactly how to show that, provide that tangibly until I realized, hey, wait a second, the national merit list shows me how many students reach that level for each high school. And so here's Irvine. I know it's really small. But let's say we're taking a look at Irvine. There's Arnold Beckman here, and you can see the students. You can then see Korean Lutheran only has about three. Irvine only has three. Northwood, pretty decent size. I'd say it's a competitive school, but not like ultra competitive with, you know, a list of schools like, let's say, Uni High. Take a look at that. That's a lot of students. Congrats to all the students. I see some of my students on there. Congrats, congrats. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm saying, you know, if I wanted to know which schools are competitive, you first have to realize that it's not necessarily the school itself, but it's the peers that you're competing against. You're being compared to your peers. And so when, if I see a ton of students capable of getting to the cutoff of national merit, that means they get a lot of training. They got a lot of resources behind their back. You know, uh, test score correlation is often based on, uh, it, and test score is correlated heavily with, with wealth of the family and, and the resources, the after school academies, et cetera. So a lot of these students are, are going to be very, very competitive and compare that to, let's say a school like Irvine high that only had three that managed the cutoff, um, it introduces a very clear way for me to show parents which schools in Irvine are more competitive than others. Now, whether, whether you should act upon it or not, is a different question because there's no no doubt that in my mind students who attend uni they do very well if they if they even if they weren't top one percent or five percent if they were top 15 and percent or 10 percent at uni high when they move to uc berkeley or to ucla i don't have any worries about them but like a top 15 like a 15 percentile woodbridge student some may may consider may struggle right um i'm not saying that's the case all the time. I'm going to have to be careful there, I guess, because people might get a little edgy about it. But in general, a uni high student preps you very, very well uh, for college. Whereas if you went to Korean Lutheran, I would doubt that it would make you would maybe struggle more than a typical uni student if you went to like a tier two or a higher university or college. Um, that being said, I also got really interested in trying to look at in California, what are the biggest schools? Like what are the most competitive overall in California? Not surprised with Monte Vista. I've worked with students here every year. 
they are pumpers, like straight pumpers. I was very surprised first to not see Harvard Westlake because that's the number two school in in the United States, like I think under Exeter, right? And then it's um, number one in California. Uh, but I was looking under Los Angeles, Los Angeles, and then I realized it's not under Los Angeles. It's actually under Studio City. So Harvard Westlake, decent chunk. This is a private school, guys. Arguably one of the the best West Coast private school in the world, right? Or like in the world. What am I saying? The West Coast private school, and it sends a, it gets the same amount of cutoff of PSAT national merit as uni does. Uni is a great school in that regard. It's very competitive. Harvard Westlake, super, super uh, pressure cooker, competitive school. Um, it has kind of some, some, some issues and drama with that. Um, very sad. Um, I'm going to step away from that, but let's see here. Lindbrook was pretty interesting to me. Uh, DV High School. DV High School has a lot of pumpers. Dang, look how big that list is. Um, the Harker School. So... Uh, I, I'm not surprised by the Harker School there. I think that was a, it's always a really good choice. What what took me, like my jaw dropped was Canyon Crest. Do I realize I shouldn't be that surprised? Because when I think of San Diego, what's the best school? Where do I see some of the strongest students? It's definitely Canyon Crest. So Canyon Crest though, like still is massive. There's tons and tons of students. Um, I'll leave a link, like I said, of this below parents, if you're searching for a high school in California and you can move to anywhere you want, then comes the question of whether you do want, you have to do that balancing act, right? You want to surround yourself with good competitive peers, your student, your child, but at the same time is if everyone is competing and college colleges essentially look for like the top 5% of each school or the top 3% or top 1% of each school, you're really competing with a lot of people to try to meet that, to fit within that wedge. So it's a balancing act there that you got to have. Um, I guess I'll play something out in Irvine. You know, if I was to help a kid today and I knew that they were really competent with sports and, and activities and may not be the best in terms of academics, like instead of uni, why not go to Woodbridge? Obviously, there's school district rules and stuff. And But if you were to put that aside and you had the luxury of choice here, you know, it would lead to discussions like that. Um, am I missing anything else here? No, I'll provide the links to all of this. I just thought it was a very interesting new tool for me to showcase to parents when I run into questions like, which high school do you recommend? How much more competitive is uni really, or is Troy really, or is Harvard Westlake really? And yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.